They're working up now to the Catterick opening show, when, if they're good enough, the new lads actually get their white helmets. But things are not going well, even with the old hands. Okay, in! Everything seems to be going from bad to worse, and the instructors are not amused. <laughs> Nevertheless, there's no going back now. They don't tell you at the beginning of training, but the tires on your bikes are not the best for rough work. This is not just economy, it's so you'll fall off. Now, though, proper new tyres are given out. And the coveted white helmets are decorated in anticipation. You can paint on anything except the sort of words the sergeant uses. Number one dress is issued now. Number one dress is special, with red stripes down your jaw. This may be a safeguard against accident. With gear like this, you'd hardly dare come off in public. <laughs> I'm going to say much, just, just have a good one and don't flap too much. Keep the ner you'll be nervous at first, but once you get into it, you find your nerves will start disappearing. Keep your helmet under your left arm, remember, and your right hand glove off. And just keep yourself together. Don't stop flapping. And now all the anxieties, all the attacks of nerves have gone, just as the sergeant said they would. Officers have presented helmets like these many times before, would probably like a pound note for every one they've given. But for these lads, it's once in a lifetime. And for their parents, too. The months between June and October are one long stint for the White Helmets. Now they perform, now they travel. They'll see a lot, a lot of people will see them, but there won't be a lot of rest, and soon one performing place will blur into another. Now they're in Western Germany, performing at the annual fair at Paderborn, as much probably for the other British troops and families still stationed there as for the Germans themselves. Fortified with the Paderborn equivalent of food, they demonstrate their now confident crossover technique. And then to Berlin. They arrive over the split city to take part in the 750th anniversary celebrations. Over the spots which were part of a war which raged and finished here before they were even born. Over the Charlottenburg Palace. Over Albert Speer's Olympic Stadium, Hitler's pride. Over the Unter den Linden, which isn't called that anymore, but the June the 17th Strasse, after the students' rising of 1953. Over the infamous wall, which afterwards divided east from west, still before most of them were even thought of. They're ambassadors now, that's what the army tells them, showers of the British flag, well-behaved, be blazered, you might take them for a team of cricketers or bowls players. And they're given the divided city spiel by their guide. Now we are here at the checkpoint Charlie. The wall is uh, 164 kilometers 
long. And uh, in the time from 1961 till nowadays, more than 74 persons lost their life who tried to escape from East Berlin to West Berlin. 74 people. And that is speaking for itself, I think. If a uh, government must uh, have such a big prison and uh, have to uh, shoot off people who want to go from East to West, it could be or can't be a democracy. You agree with me, I think so. Because the West allies protect us in West Berlin. Yes, and we say thank you very much indeed, because you stay here with your army for our freedom. And yeah, the Russians protect us, not uh, they occupy us, I think so. And now follows a session of mutual photography. The white helmets photograph the east, the east photographs them back, which may seem stupid, but is at least better than bullets. Photography and sightseeing are all very well, but the team's here to work, to perform. It sounds a grand life, but things don't always go smoothly. The display they put on for the American troops is poorly attended. They go through their paces, but they don't get the feedback any showman needs from an audience. And then it rains. It rains German cats and dogs, and the next venue is like a lake. Riding bikes the way the white helmets ride them is not easy at the best of times. In a flood, things get far more difficult. Again, hardly anyone turns up to watch, and perhaps that's no bad thing. But next day, next day is the big day. It's Combined Forces Parade Day, which means the Brits are here, the Americans are here, the French are here, the Russians could be here if they really wanted to take part, but they don't and never have. They say it's a Western propaganda stunt, and they may just have a point. President Reagan's supposed to be here to watch the military go through its paces, but he's been diverted because of local student trouble. But the White Helmets are here, and they put on as polished a performance as they can under the circumstances, but they're still not really happy. The roadway they're given for their display is wide enough only for part of their repertoire. There's not enough room for the crossovers or for leaping through fire. They could have done better back on the airfield at Catering. 